Now as for the forms of dhikr, in one narration, which is also Sahih, the Prophet ﷺ said, there are no days in which good deeds are greater. Uh, there is no days in which good deeds are greater or more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min al ayyam al ashr from these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So the Prophet ﷺ says, فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ مِنَ التَّحْلِيلِ وَالتَّكْبِيرِ وَالتَّحْمِيدِ So increase within these 10 days of takbir and tahmeed or tahleel and takbir and tahmeed saying La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah and SubhanAllah. Now the Prophet ﷺ here is stressing quantity. Of course, quality is important, but the Prophet ﷺ here is stressing quantity in the sense of keep yourself engaged with these forms of dhikr. You can't do that if you're engaged too much with other people. And so take the advice of Ibn Abbas ta'ala and carve out some personal time for yourself. And even if you're around people, lots of dhikr and the athkar that are familiar to us. When you're walking between places, you know, when we talk about the last 10 nights of Ramadan, we always tell people that even when you're getting up to go get your suhoor or to do something else, keep yourself in a state of dhikr. Uh, when, when I have my hijaj in Arafah, I always tell them like, look, the lines are long for the bathrooms in Arafah, okay? Even when you're standing in line, keep yourself in dhikr. Don't just take a break, say, all right, let me go ahead and just start having a conversation. No, those are precious hours. Keep yourself engaged and busy in dhikr. And subhanAllah, what we find uh, is an authentic hadith that Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that they used to go through the marketplace throughout the first 10 days of the Hijjah. This is a lost Sunnah. And they would shout out takbir. They would shout out Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, prompting the people, even as they were in the marketplace, to say Allahu Akbar. Please don't walk into a shopping mall and start shouting Allahu Akbar. This is a Sunnah that we take the best from inshaAllah Ta'ala for ourselves to remind the Muslims, remind the believers throughout these 10 days. So when you're about to get into an argument with your spouse or you're in your home, remind them Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. These are days of takbir, these are days of tahreel, these are days of tahmeed, these are days of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just the day of Eid, but throughout the first 10 days, the Sahaba would prompt one another and remind one another. If you wanna make this a, a time, uh, if you are with your family ta'ala, or, or even with friends, whoever it may be. And of course, I know some are still isolated due to COVID, but reminding people inshallah ta'ala, hey, let's, let's do this inshallah ta'ala. Let's prompt one another to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And imagine, you know, I, I always like to, to cast uh, this time on Hajj because, you know, it's just the easiest way again to take the physical dimensions of Hajj and to think about the spiritual dimensions of the Hijjah since they're so connected. Uh, when you're in a bus that is on its way to the Kaaba and you're in Ihram and there are people that are doing Talbiyah throughout, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, that is a game changer. That keeps everyone engaged and reminded to keep on doing so. It's just subhanAllah a natural function of us that, you know, even if I'm half asleep and I see someone next to me and they're going, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik la Sharika Laka Labbaik, then I'll start doing it as well because that's how we are as human beings. And so the Sahaba were prompting one another with dhikr within these first uh, 10 days. And SubhanAllah, uh, you know, we, we find that this was the gift that Ibrahim السلام, taught our Prophet وسلم, for our ummah. When Rasulullah met Ibrahim السلام, since we're commemorating both of them, uh, uh, in, in these days, uh, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa met Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam said to him, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give my salam to your ummah. Ibrahim alayhi salam sent salam to us. Wa alayka salam, Ya Nabi Allah. He sent salam to us. And he said, and tell them that Jannah has this vast plain and pure soil and sweet water. So Jannah is a beautiful plain leveled land its soil is, uh, is pure, its water is sweet, and you grow plants in that soil by saying what? SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Every time you say that, your land in Jannah is increasing in real estate and in value because the trees are popping up in Al Jannah for you. Every time you say SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. That's in normal times. 
What about then in the best 10 days of the year where they are days of barakah, days where deeds are multiplied? So keep yourself busy. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Look, the, the, the simplest way that I can give you inshallah ta'ala is take a number for each one of those afkar. And of course, the things that are you know, uh, done on regular days. So for example, 100 times each one of these forms of dhikr. Right. If you can do 100, do 100. If you can make it 200, do 200. If for the sake of these days, you say, I'm going to make them a thousand each, inshallah ta'ala, but I'm going to put a number on myself and then I'm going to try to do even more than that number in the Nahi ta'ala, then do so because these are the best days of the year to do so in the Nahi ta'ala. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Keep on doing so in the Nahi ta'ala. Now, when we get to the day of Arafah in particular, well, Hajj Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. Uh, just like you know, the Prophet said, "An Nadmu Tawbah, wa Dua Hu Al Ibada." That regret is repentance, and supplication is worship. Arafah is the core of Hajj, and Arafah is the core of the Hijjah. So Arafah is the best day of Hajj. It is the most fundamental and most important pillar of the Hajj, and it is the most important day of the days of the Hijjah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us eight days to prepare ourselves for that day. And just like the Hajjaj go out to Mina for Yawm Tarwiyah to rest even their camels, to rest everything for that momentous day of Arafah, the eight days prior are to get our souls ready, rested, rejuvenated for that day of Arafah. And the Prophet says to us that there's no day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets free more souls from the fire than on the day of Arafah. On that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws near to the earth in a way that befits him and he exhibits his, his benevolence and he remarks to the angels, he boasts to the angels, Ma arad ha'ula, what is it that these servants of mine desire when they're coming out to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In this regard, the people are calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in different languages, all in one valley and of course around the world as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the angels to bear witness that he has forgiven them. May Allah make us all amongst those that are forgiven. SubhanAllah, the benefits of uh, the Hajj and the Du'as at Arafah are for the whole Ummah. They're for the whole Ummah, right? Allah forgives everyone as a result of that and the Barakah of those Du'as reaches the entire Ummah. And so this is a time for us to remember our brothers and sisters in Palestine, to remember our brothers and sisters in Syria and Yemen, to remember our brothers and sisters from the Uyghurs and from the Rohingya, to remember our brothers and sisters in Ethiopia, to remember our brothers and sisters that are struggling all around the world in the Nahi Ta'ala. This is the time for us to remember them inshallah ta'ala in our du'as as we always should remember them. But the benefits of this day reach everyone. So this is a day of du'a.